Hello, everybody. Welcome to Recon. It is Wednesday, September 2nd, and I'm Danny Grimes. I'm coming to you from my studio in Southwest Florida. John is actually doing an act of service because of the storm, doing some storm cleanup. However, we've got Matt with us. How are you doing, Matt? Better than I deserve. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, hey, look, there's always something about special about every day we do recon. I start with that, take about 30 seconds. And actually, this is kind of a cool one, National Custodian Day. Now, when I first saw that, I thought, well, I think of a custodian. I think of being in, uh, like, not an office setting, in a school setting. What does that have to do with a recon? Well, I can tell you, many times we are actually, uh, like, cleaned up on aisle nine when we're going in and having conversations with a for sale by owner, an assisted seller, or an expired listing, because they ha might have been fed some junk. And we have to go in and have conversations and get them back into reality, get them on the right track. And one thing I want to pass on to you today is I want you to understand this. If you ever get asked what percent of your listing sell, I've got the answer for you. It would be a good tattoo on your calf. 100% of your listing sell. If you listen to the market and the, and the sellers listen to you. How about that? Hey, listen, we do have a special announcement. Tomorrow we have a guest, Steve Schleter. Also, MAPS coach, Gary actually handpicked him to be a regional director. A lot of experience. He's the one that came up with the DTD2. I'm sure he's got some great follow-up. It will be telephone Thursday. Today is Wednesday, so we will be at the table, and I have a little surprise for you. If you want to play, raise your hand. If you And if you raise your hand and participate, or if you raise your hand and we don't have time to call on you, you're still entered into the drawing for either a coaching call with John or myself, or a free set of Ginsu steak knives, whichever you would prefer, all right? We have that drawing on Friday. Here's the surprise. Uh, we will be at the table. I've got six objections already loaded. And you just give me a number of which one you want, and we will handle it. Fair enough. Justin has had his hand up for the last 45 minutes. Welcome, my friend. Where are you located? I'm at Springfield, Missouri. Awesome. Well, thanks for participating. I don't know that I met you yet. Is this your first time? I know. I've been here a couple of days. I've been watching for about a week or two, but this is my first time participating. Okay, then we'll pull out the rough sandpaper. Uh, you pick a number between uh, one and six. Six. Oh, boy. Here we go. Six. All right, so you are at the listing table. You are talking to Garrett. He is a seller at the table, and the, and the seller asks you. You can see behind me. It's coming through. What price do you suggest for my home? And, uh, Getting it done. Getting it done. Oh, sorry. Yes, that, that. Sorry, guys. Okay. If you can right, hear me better so, now. Eddie, I know you're getting somewhere quiet. We can come back if you, if you would rather us do that. Oh, no. I'm, I think I'm good right now. <laughs> okay. So, Garrett, you ready? Your objection is, and not your question, and this is a trap, what price do you suggest for my home you may go justin you have two minutes unless we unless we give you the gong before that okay so justin what price do you suggest for my home i think i think if we listed at two hundred fifty thousand, you would see a lot of action uh yeah um i was expecting way more than that well you know we're coming out of a a market that was a little different but i do think this particular price range is what the market is telling us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did we freeze? No, that, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, um, sorry. I was letting him process. Um, I will say that uh, the, you know, if you price your home correctly, what will happen is, you know, more people will respond and the the bigger pool of people that you have to choose from, the better offers you'll have to select from. Um, if we price too high, we'll get our days on market higher. And uh, that almost always leads to price decreases. Okay. I'm yeah, gonna, but if I... I... Hang on, I'm going to pause you. So you kind of uh, suggested John would ask, always ask, how'd you do? You know, honestly, um, I wasn't prepared for that question. I had a different script for this morning, but um, <laughs> that, uh, Sorry about that. I, I, I can tell I need work, but I do I do like using silence as a weapon. So that was I was trying to do anyway. <laughs> 
Yeah, I caught a good nap during that time. That's great. Well, all right, so we'll, we'll give you some feedback. I'm going to let Matt go first. And, you know, one thing I've discovered, you know, the, with John's feedback, my feedback, et cetera, is that sometimes we give you micro feedback on maybe conversations, and sometimes we give you kind of a 100 or 200 foot view on the situation. So, Matt, take, take it away on whatever you'd like to say, and I'll finish up. Well, keep, um, what I like to keep in mind is that at that point in the meeting, we're at the very end, at least for me. So I will ask them, you know, based off of everything we've gone over, what is the market telling you? So that's it. You, you want to you wanna get their sentiments because they're asking you, what price do you suggest for my home? Hey, that, that's a great question. Be happy to answer that in a second. But just so I just so I see if we're on just so I see if we're on the same sheet of music or not, what what's the market told you so far based on what we've gone over? So, so that's, that's all. great feedback. So find out basically what's on their mind first. And I know I um, I'm a little bit different, and I think Matt and I are kind of in the same camp here. A couple of different things. One is I don't believe in guessing on, on anything. So I do have. I, I do have an axiom out there that believes, you know, we don't know what the maximum or top market value is until you expose it. However, we know three things. And this is what I think a great agent should have with them. You're going to show them what's sold. That's the history, what's active. That's the present. And based, if you have that information, like Gary Keller says, we should understand what the trends are. So you can go over that and say, based on this information here, where would you like to position People that have been on my role plays, particularly mastery, every Friday, we go into this a little bit more in depth. I do not put my fingerprints on the number because here's the issue. Most of you people who've been in real estate less than 12, 13, 14 years have never had to go back hat in hand and have a price reduction below the number you suggested because the market's always helped you. So we'll work on that more. We won't take the time on recon. We'll go on that a little bit more in depth. Now from the hundred foot view, uh, I want you guys to make sure, and we'll always work on this. I appreciate you being the first one up, and that's the model, Justin, that we want to come from curiosity and ask questions. And Matt's first question was awesome. Where do you see yourself based on the information I showed you? Does that help you, uh, Justin? Garrett. It sure does. It's a great start. Yes. All right, Garrett, you're up. And so you get a number one through five. Or you can actually Three. do six. You could do six as well if you wanted to. Let's do six. All right. What happens when you, anybody remember records? What happens when you had a broken record? It plays the same thing over and over again, right? Okay. Actually, so Jose, let's do something. You are. Let's do something Jose. different. Let's do three. Let's do oh, three. That's... Sorry about that, Danny. Oh, that's okay. Here we go. All right. You are, um, uh, you want this to be a buyer or seller? Seller. Number one. Seller, you're meeting with Jose. Jose, you're at the table. Hey, listen, the election's only 30 days away. I think we can wait until after the election. Two minutes. Go. Jose, hey, what's a... What's oh, go ahead. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, yes. Uh, listen, after considering, I think we're going to wait till after the election. Okay. What's important to you about waiting? Well, you know, I think rates might drop. Um, that's big. the biggest thing. Other than rates, uh, is there anything that's holding you back from doing business uh, today? Well, if we get better rates, I think we can, you know, maximize our profit a little bit more. Okay. And remind me again, why are we selling? We want to go up north. Okay. Okay. And how quickly do we want to go up north? Preferably after the elections. Okay. Now, what happens if after elections, the uh, market gets flooded with homes? What then? That's a great question. You're the professional. What do you think is going to happen? You know, that's a great question. If I wish I had a crystal ball and I wish I was a multimillionaire because of that. But, you know, we know what the market is now. And we know that uh, there's a limited inventory, uh, on, you know, what your property is. So we have a better chance now to you know, uh, get uh, what you're looking for versus possibly waiting if the market does do go down. That makes sense. So are you ready to work with me now? Yes, let's do it. Perfect, this. sounds good. 
Oh, a minute and a half. You say it's 30 seconds. So you can uh, do uh, write your uh, fiance love notes. She's getting married in a couple of weeks. So if you want to give them a congratulation in the chat or a warning, either one, feel free. Matt. Um, I keep things much more simple. Like when, when they give you, when, when they say, I want to wait till the election, again, get them to tell you a story. What are you hoping is going to happen? So what are you hoping is going to happen by waiting until after the election? Then he's going to tell you. Okay. And then you can ask him, well, what happens for your plans if that doesn't happen? What are you going to do? So I, I try to take him back to is keeping the home an option if what you're hoping to happen doesn't occur. So I'll I'll just keep it brief with that. But yeah, it, you you got stop we stop trying to lead people down a path of what we think is going to happen. Increase inventory, doom and gloom. Find out what they think is going to happen, and then ask them what happens if their plans don't pan out that way. Because if they say, oh, we'll just stay, that might not be somebody you want to be in business with. So, anyhow. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, basically, in the 100 foot position here for everyone is this whatever they have in their mind, and this is pretty consistent on this, on, on Recon with Matt, John, and myself, and many of the others who contribute, is that you're never going to be able to out talk them and pull them out of their position. The only way for them to change their mind is that maybe by you asking the right question, they have that v8 moment and they convince themselves that maybe they're not evaluating it right so that's why we get keep with questions we don't tell because telling pushes them away and we could spend all we could spend the rest of our recon 30 minutes just on this because you know one of the things you want to do is, is a seller if the seller is dragon anchor the other side of the coin well they're are they going to be a buyer so wait a minute so you've got to you've got to play both of those angles, not just focus on the seller or buyer in front of you, right, Matt? That's it. Yeah. You. You. But. But. By. But you have to keep it very vague and amb very ambiguous to pull that out of them. And if you know that they're going to buy down the line, then you can you can steer it that way. But I never like to steer an agenda, which is and don't take this the wrong way, Garrett. That's what you were doing. You were steering an agenda of well, what happens if inventory goes up? Yeah, well, it could go up regardless. It could go up, it could go down. We don't know. So I don't supplant that in their mind. So I see in the chat there really quick, somebody asked about where you could find the recording. I put the YouTube channel up there if you see behind me. And um, yeah, raise your hand if you want to participate, Alberto, and we do our best to get everybody in. So let's go to number three. Jose, you are now the agent and you're going to go to David on this one. And so you can pick any number, one through six. And you already know what's behind door number three and door number six. You can pick those again, or you can go uh, for a crapshoot. What do you want? Crapshoot number one. Wow. Here's a buyer coming in. The buyer's at the table with you, Jose. David's the buyer, and you've done your counseling, and this is their criteria you know, other than the house. Hey, I want you to know I will never pay full price. Go. Hey, Jose, I just want you to know I'll never pay full price. For a property tell me a little bit more about paying full price for the right property david yeah sure absolutely so i think that just right now that the buyers kind of have a little bit more of an advantage and homes are sitting on the market longer and i think that we can get away with offering under asking price okay what is your your experience what has your experience been with offering under price I, I don't have any experience. I'm just looking, this is all based on what I'm seeing happening and going on around us. Right. I completely understand. And and if I were in your shoes, I would want to save as much money as I could possibly save. Right. But if we come across the right home, it checks off all the boxes for you. And we can show you a way yeah. where you could still acquire that home for the, for a budget that fits your budget. Is that acceptable to you? It sounds like a great plan. I mean, yeah, I definitely want to, if there's a home, we come across a home that checks all my boxes, I would still like to see if we can get that at a deal. Right. And what does a deal look like to you? Like I said before, I I, I don't want to pay full price. Okay. But help me understand you. If it's the right home, we make it fit your budget. 
Would that make sense to you? Yes, that would make sense. Even if it's paying full price. Is there a way that we can avoid that? We can definitely try to. However, keep in mind, if it's the right home, if it's your budget, why keep looking? Help me understand that part. Time. I'm just going to let Matt go first again. Again, I know I, I already know what he's probably going to say. I just want to ask, does anybody know why he doesn't want to pay full price? You notice this. Uh-oh, I lost my, I don't know why. Oh, there it is. Notice there's <laughs> clarify on here, you guys. I mean, if you're an Uber driver and so say, I want to go to Baltimore, that doesn't tell me, tell, doesn't tell, that doesn't help me. Where in Baltimore? Get clarity. Matt. David said he didn't want to pay full price. My first question would have been, what makes you say that? What's the significance of that? And he implied that he wanted to get a good deal. So then uh, my next statement would have been this, and I and I think the role play would have been over. And David, tell me if I'm wrong. David, if I, if what what would what would you do if I showed you a property that you could have bought for hundred and fifty thousand dollars more a year and a half ago, it, and it had a hundred fifty thousand dollar discount today, but the only way to get it was to pay full price. Would that be a good deal to you? You're saving one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, but you have to pay full price to get it. Would you do it? Wow, that's it. We're done. And if 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 that's really they're looking to good a deal, but you don't know until you ask. What's significant about paying not paying full price to you? What are you hoping to accomplish? Great feedback. So if you go back and watch the uh, this um, uh, role play, it's recorded, it's on the Facebook and YouTube channel, you'll notice, here, here, here's something I want you to do. The acknowledgement is not agreeing with them. Meaning, and, and this, and, and Jose, you said, well, hey, look, you know, I don't blame you. I don't want, I wouldn't want to pay full, uh, full price for anything either. Like, you're just kind of like digging yourself a hole. The other thing I want to say from the 100 foot view standpoint is this, not this, Matt covered the conversation. Full price is not necessarily full value. So if someone's offering a hundred dollar bill for $90, would you pay $90 for it? So you've yeah, got to get th would. that through their head. Does that make sense? The, the, other, the other thing that we're asking him is how long are you looking for property that you don't want to pay full price? Right. You know, yep. how many offer how many how many offer do you submit with no full price be accepting Jose? Tell me a little more about that. Yep. <clears throat> so did you get, uh, you asked the question. Do you have your hand up? Because I know you've been wanting to participate. He, he, so. Yeah, he put he put his hand up in the chat, Denny. Um I don't think he's figured out how to do it on his his care his avatar there. Yeah, I right, I, so. I jumped this week. I, I jumped with you guys this week. Uh to be honest, I, I didn't know. How about this war? That's okay. No worries. So, David, tell you what, I'm going to get you warmed up. So, you're going to be in the bullpen, uh, um, Alberto. David, you are the, um, so you are, now you're the agent, Jose, or Alberto. You're going to be, uh, we'll find out. So, David, you're going to go one to six here. What do you want? Something we haven't done yet. Number four, your buyer, Alberto. David, Alberto says to you, I want your fee to be paid by the seller. Don't be coming to me for a dollar. You're at the table. Alberto, you're that buyer. You got it? And yes. You have, all right. Go. Okay, Alberto. So I completely understand. Aside from your concern that you want my fee to be paid by the seller, is there any other reason that we wouldn't be moving forward with this, with, with, with uh, getting you into your new home? Not really. Um, what I'm not looking to do is pay the commission. I want to. I completely you know, understand, and that's a valid consider. concern. That's a valid concern. So, ninety-nine percent of the properties that we are going to go see, the seller is going to be compensating for that. If we do find you your home, your ideal home that checks all of your boxes, is there any reason why we wouldn't move forward if we can make that work for you? Not really. If I like say, if you find the seller pay the commission, 
I going to do that, but you know, I'm, I don't feel comfortable to pay that buyer agreement. And I will do everything in my power to try to negotiate to try to negotiate that commission with the seller. If we're not successful with that, are we able to find a way to move forward to get you into this property? I say, you know, I don't have the money to pay the commission. So how how is it going to that work? You're going to pay, you're going to work for free? Well, we would have some options. There are some options that we would be able to roll my fee into, into the offer and into the, the loan. That is one of the options. If we're not able to negotiate the fee with the seller, is that something that you would be open to? Time. I'd be open. Damn it. Well, David, what do you think? How'd you do? Uh, it's... Not well. So, Matt. Um, so, guys, uh, one thing that I I don't think I've mentioned this before, when when Vinny and I and John are given advice or uh, feedback, don't pay attention to the specific questions in which we ask. I think a lot of you do. You try to mimic what or mirror what the quest the question. It's it's the technique. It's 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 peeling back the onion and understanding how and why we're doing what we're doing, not exactly what we're doing. So in that situation right there, Dave, really, I like, I, I like to seek to understand, say, hey, have you ever bought a home before, Albert? Okay, and, and when you bought the house, who, did, did, you, did you also pay for it? Who, who brought the money? And they're probably gonna say the bank or something along those lines, yeah, but, but, but you paid for it, right? You agreed to pay for it. So you brought the money. Okay, and, and and correct me if I'm wrong, agents were paid. Okay, so who really has paid the commission? Who really pays it? Because nothing's possible without your money. Do you see my do you see my point? So it's it's instead of just going down this 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 uh path of well, 99% of sellers, that's that's telling again. You need to help them self-discover, help them self-discover that what they're saying is nonsensical. Hey, if you bought a house in the past hundred years, you either bought you brought the cash, or you got financing, and it was smoke and mirrors as to what side of the settlement statement a, a broker was paid. But you're the buyer; you brought the money; you paid the commission. Right, and can, that, I, that's can, I, can I add something pretty quick? You hang on, hang on, hang on. Now, hang on, Alberto. You're going to be next. Here, here's here. What you saying is exactly right. You want to help them self-discover. And I, I would have gone down the same road if you bought a home before. Here's the thing I want you to understand, the 100-foot view. Don't solve their a problem they don't know they have. You've got to take it in little bite-sized pieces. Like you're playing a chess match, you may have to ask a couple of questions that when you're watching this, you think, oh, I'm going to put my eyes out of the spoon because this is not moving fast enough. You have to move them along where they're starting to get the picture. And then when he said... I don't have the money. Well, okay. So if that we could solve that issue, are we, are we okay? Get that's a little win. Now you go in if you haven't already. Go into the story. The last time you bought the home, who paid the fee and where they get the money? So that's a great. That's a great tactic. I trust you got something out of it. So Alberto, you're going to be on. This is your first time. We'll give you a thumbs up, and we'll use uh, we'll use cotton swabs on you if you want. If you, you want to be easy on you. And no, 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 no that, 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 that's fine. I've been in the industry for more than 14 years. So I know easy you know is the way to go. I, I, I like to do the way it is, you know. All right. So, Barnes, you are going to be, let's see, you're going to get a number one through six. Um, Give me one. It's fine. We haven't done this one yet. Okay. So, you are going to be a buyer, Barnabas. And your objection is you're at the table. Hey, look, you know, I know interest rates are down. I'm going to, I want them to fall a little bit more before I step in. Go. So I'm going to be the agent, right? Yep. Okay. Hello. No, you're at the table. Hey. Oh, on the table. table. Yeah. Who, who are you speaking, David, or who is, who is the uh, main? Me, the me, me. So Alberto, yeah, I, I'd love to move forward with you, but honestly, I think I'm just going to wait till uh, next spring. I think the from what I've heard, the interest rates are going to go down. I just oh, want to okay. see what happens and then probably buy at that time. 
Okay, I hear you. So you want to wait until the interest rate go down to move forward, right? Correct. Yes, that'd be you know let, much let more affordable ask, for let me. me. Let me ask you something. Is the property that you're looking is available today? Okay. Are you looking to move forward with the property with all the criteria that you're looking versus to wait until the interest rate go down? Because this is what is going to happen when the interest rate go down. More inventory and more buyers they are going to be on the market. So tell me what you want to do. Is the property that you're looking with the criteria that you're looking is Alberto, available today? Alberto, all right, stop. Now, what you're saying, ask a question. No telling here. Okay. So this your first assignment. We'll just stop the uh, clock. How would you make that point by asking? Okay. So Matt, okay. give him uh, give him a little push. Before that, give a little push. Yeah, you just 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 ask him what what do you think will happen when interest rates go down? Go down. And ask, what what. What do you think all the other buyers that are saying the exact same thing as you will do when interest rates go down? What do you okay. think they will do? Okay, and they're going to say, Pete Barnum is going to say, well, they'll probably start looking to buy homes. Great. And what might that do to home values? Okay. Make sense? Because that, yeah, that's the line we're going down. Okay, and you can cool. stay on that. You can stay on that track. So let me ask you, the, you're attempting to buy a house. You want a good deal. You said, well, when the seller sends all these buyers stepping in, what do you think is going to happen to the seller's mindset? So you see, you're going to bring them. This is called the, the little breadcrumbs, right? Don't you, you take them in little bite-sized bits. Am I saying that right? You guys, you guys understand you could get, you could tell them that, but they're not going to get it. Does that make sense? Yes. What? And then what, what will it do for your plans if you get a quarter point percent, you get a quarter percent better rate, but you pay $70,000 more for the home? Is, is, how would you feel if that were the scenario and how it played out? So, so you're, and you're not, you're not speaking in certainties. You're just asking them, you're, Hey, what, what will you do if this happens? Yeah. So here we go. We've got a couple minutes really fast. So Barnabas, uh, I'll let you be the agent. We've seen everything here, one through six. Pick a number, uh, or if you oh. have a favorite one, I'll put it back up. Let's let's do two so we can see them all. I think we did two. Maybe not. All right. Oh. Uh, and you are going to Tanner. Tanner says at the table, you don't have to repeat it, Tanner. I want a good deal. Barnabas, go. Hey, Tanner, you know, my, my goal is to get you a good deal as well. I mean, that's what we're here. That's what I'm going to do as your agent. But what what would you consider a good deal? Good deal. Maybe like a lower price, you know, than what's listed for. I just don't want to, you know, overpay. Sure, absolutely. I understand. And, and you know, we can always negotiate. Um, really depends on, uh, you know, how much other interest there is in the property. But let you me ask you this. You don't need that, Barnabas. Oh. You don't need that part. Okay. Uh, but let me ask you this. Okay, sure. Uh, other than getting a good deal, is there any other reason you'd um, want to hesitate in signing this? No, it looked, I, I got the money. It's not a problem. I just don't want to overpay. I just want a deal. Okay, great. Um, yeah, in that case... Uh, define overpaying. Yeah, yeah. define overpaying. What What is overpaying to you? Well... Typically, you know, there's like bidding wars and stuff going on. I would not want to do that. Okay. Well, we don't have to do a bidding war. We, when we go to put an offer in, we can just, you know, decide what the offer is ahead of time okay. and put that don't in. Don't need that it. part. You're always okay. defaulting to making a oh. statement. Don't do that. Okay. Sorry. Stay online with questioning him. Okay, sure. What's, what's important to you about not being in a bidding war? And, and uh, let me give you, Tanner, why, why do you think people are bidding on the home? Hmm. How do they really want the home? I'm not sure, Danny, because they don't understand the market is. You know, they, I don't know. There's so let me, well, let me ask you this. If somebody had a $100 bill and they're asking $90 for it, what will happen? Well, I mean, many people will be interested. Right. And would you be interested in that? Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm looking for. 
Ah, oh, now notice what he just said there is totally different than what he said. So if you ended up in a bidding situation where you got the $100 bill for $98, would you have won? Yeah, I mean, kind of at least, you know, still will, you know, make me achieve what well, I'm looking for. The sellers that are on the market and have not sold, they're offering a hundred dollar bill for hundred and seven dollars. No, I wouldn't do so it. You, oh, there you go. That's how I would do it, Matt. Yeah, nice. Absolutely. But then, but then, but then also, but then also, you can go back to the whole the the line of conversation I had with David on on well, what what would you do? And that's what you did essentially is well, if you could, if I could save you one hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a home, but you had to pay full price to get it. Would that be a good deal to you? Okay, so then you you isolate that. But also, where I inevitably end up with clients like that is because they're saying I want to get a good deal. Define that to me, number one, and then number two on the back side of it, I always land somewhere around who sets the value of the property, in your opinion, Tanner. And and he's going to say something along the lines of maybe the seller, but what I what I help them self discover is. Tanner, when you when you pay for the house, you set the value. So even even if you save X amount of dollars, that home is now worth that. So what are you hoping to accomplish in all of this? So awesome job, you guys. We played it a little bit differently. Great input. Thanks, Matt. The last thing I'll say as we close out is this. When he's, I don't want to overpay, another question would be, are you defining overpaying today? or in five years, you know, right. so love you made it knuckle bump. Be careful out there and Hey, go, go knuckle bump your cust custodian out there. Cause it's national custodian day. Have a great day. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Hey, before, before you go, Denny, before you go, guys, if you want a deep dive into this, uh, come to mass mastery on Friday. Is it one o'clock? If you really want to like understand the soup to nuts of this, please come to mastery. Not many people show up there. And that's where we spend a whole hour going into this. So yeah. it, that, that's my takeaway. Just show up. So I'm well. All right. See ya.